And this is going to seem really weird to play this right now. Prepare her for our pleasure. Why would you play that? Why would you play that? Well, that's because we have Dr. Rebecca Louisa Smith joining us. That's a quote from Ming the Merciless. Flash Gordon. Oh, my God. Good to see you, Rebecca. Good to see you, too. Yeah, thank you for joining us on the show. The timing could not be better. Um, uh, tell us about your work as the film festival doctor. Yeah. So I'm a film festival uh, consultant and I help my filmmaker clients get their films into film festivals around the world. So people come to me and say, right, I've made a film. What do I do with it? Which festivals do I send it to? How do I get it seen on the circuit? And I create the right kind of strategy to get it into the right kinds of festivals. And what would you say, like, um, this is something I've, I, I wrote a book on film festivals. I've helped, but boy, the industry has changed a lot recently. Yeah. And if you've got a certain type of film, you're kind of trying to match this type of movie to a specific, uh, to a specific festival where it might fit. Yeah. There are, for example, if you've made a small horror film, there are a lot of horror film festivals. Yeah. What's the, what's the process like when they come to you? So the first thing we have to do is to look at the film. That is obviously the key thing and to look at it and, and think, right, have they made a film that festivals are going to want? And if so, what different types of festivals, what level interior festivals? So the festival, sorry, the filmmaker might say, I want to submit to Sundance, Slamdance and South by Southwest and all this kind of stuff. You have to think, well, first of all, have we got a film that those kinds of festivals are going to want? If we have, we can then start to plan. If we haven't, we think of a plan B. It's going to be festivals are going to want it. We just have to be very strategic, very focused, and very streamlined. Cool. So can you tell us how you think the industry has changed in recent years? Before you uh, joined us on the show with my colleague, I guess I should introduce myself. Yeah. I really do that. <laughs> I'm Chris Gore. This is Alan Ng, Hi. Uh, my uh, co-host on the show. We're each other's co-hosts, I guess. But it's um, we were talking about how much Sundance has changed. I don't know. And also, I don't even know if the dream is to get into Sundance or one of the big festivals. I don't believe you need to do that anymore. Yeah. I don't believe that the big festivals are 100% necessary uh, to have a successful film. And by successful film, all I, I, I think the barometer for success is get distribution, get paid so people can see your movie. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's a very good point. You say that because it's not a case of, you know, just to get distribution and, you know, notable awards and exposure it can only be done at Sundance and Cannes and Berlin and Tribeca and all those kind of ones. Obviously, they do help a lot and they're brilliant, but other festivals offer good opportunities as well that can result in those goals being achieved, distribution, sales, um, getting the right connections. So it can. Like, it's it's can be quite a very narrow view. So filmmakers think that's the only way to get those goals to be achieved. It has to be in the top tier. But for example, uh, we've had film screen at the St. Louis Film Festival, which is a great Oscar qualifying festival. And they got distribution through that. Dances with Films helped a lot as well, smaller ones than that. And also we did really well at Indie Shorts um, for short film distribution. So there's loads of possibilities and abundance at festivals. And that's any festival that's worth its salt can certainly help filmmakers go far. Great. Uh, what are the things, one of the things uh, for those watching, we've got about almost 1,500 people watching us live on YouTube. Please smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. Uh, but we also have a lot of aspiring filmmakers who watch our show. So we'll do interviews with filmmakers and bring on experts and people like yourself. I think it's important to understand for those not familiar with a film festival, why are you going to a festival? What are the, what are the benefits for a filmmaker uh, to take their movie to a film festival? Yeah. So the key benefits are, is that festivals have an abundance of networking opportunities with all different kinds of other filmmakers, other industry professionals, all that kind of stuff. So it's where networking is where a lot of the good things can happen by building up relationships. Um, it might not be a case of that when you're there during the festival, you get a sales deal or a distribution deal, whatever. It's more a case of building up a good relationship to like and trust that person after the festival, meet up, all that kind of thing. So festivals are like the kind of 
key place to plant that seed and be a good stepping stone towards achieving the bigger picture goal, without a doubt. Obviously, they do offer as well, you know, prizes. It was fun, you know, and awards that can certainly maybe sometimes even help you get qualified to submit to the Oscars um, and BAFTA and BIF of qualified festivals as well in the UK. Um, there's a lot that they can do just by meeting people in the with the right energy, the right frame of mind. There's a lot you can get from that. Yeah, there are certain festivals. Um, uh, you can look up a list of them that if you win an award for your short film at this festival, you are then qualified. It doesn't mean you'll get nominated, but you're um, eligible to be nominated for an Oscar if you win an award as a short film at a particular festival. There's a list. I believe actually the Oscars actually has the list. Oscars. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So they actually also offer it now to documentary features, not narrative oh, wow. features. Yeah. Um, animation short, um, student Oscars is a separate thing. But yes, yeah, so if your film wins the Oscar qualifying award and the festival, which is Oscar qualifying, <laughs> then you have then the eligibility to submit without having to do a release theatrically. We have to spend a lot of money on, you know, hiring a theater. It's great when you win that award because it does help you save some money. One of the things um, when I got the email, I think uh, from your publicist talking about having you on as a guest was you talked about um, just mental health while you're yeah. at a festival, which I, th I actually think is, I, I think you could apply that not just to film festivals, but um, working in entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> because, no, no, I'm serious. I'm being serious. Yeah. So, so, so for a second um, to, to go down this road, I, I'm going to hand it off to you, but, I think it's always important if you're taking a film to a festival, lower your expectations. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you think is going to happen, you know, don't, don't think you're going to win awards. Yeah. Don't think someone's going to give you a million dollar check. You know what? You, you might get some free drinks and appetizers that you could <laughs> probably, that's an expectation that you're, I think is fair to have, but, um, but anything else you can really spiral into a depression if you have, some expectations about I'm going to go to the festival and this is going to happen or whatever. It's like, no, 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 no. So I always think it's important. Keywords manage expectations. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, you're spot on. You know, the, the more you can detach, the better. So, you know, not expecting to win. Think, oh, yeah, I come in there with, you know, really, really confident, like my film can smash it all. And it could be that it gets really good marks, but it might just not quite get the award because it just gets put to the post. So you can't expect things to happen. It needs to important to, like, leave aside any kind of ego and like, leave aside, you know, expectation is a really good thing. Also, what I'd say to that is in the very beginning of the process is when you finish the film, and you're now going to be going into the world of film festivals and doing submissions and attending festivals, all that fun stuff. It's important to detach emotionally from your film because it's now a product. So when you were making it, it was all that arduous emotional journey of getting it from script to screen into the edit suite and finished. That is obviously a lot of work and that's very creative, very obviously a lot of emotions involved in that. But it's really important that you detach emotionally from your film. It might still be your baby and the work of art and pride and joy, which is true. But it's important that in the world of film festivals, they don't care about that. So they don't care if it took 10 years to make and it was made for made in a day or made for a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars or whatever it might be. That's not what they're looking for. You're looking at the actual film and they judge it based on the film. And that's that. So if you don't agree with their opinion, then it's important that you detach emotionally so you don't respond emotionally um, and have an upsetting journey and take rejection personally because that's not a good thing. Well, I'll say this, having had several films on the festival circuit, that's really, really good advice. So uh, we've got a lot of people watching live. We've got a bunch of questions from our chat. Do you mind if we go to some of these questions? Absolutely. Fire away. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to start here with Christopher Moonlight Productions asks, it sounds like it's not worth submitting to a film fest if you can't attend. How much should an indie filmmaker set aside in their budget for them? That's a good question. I'd say it's important in terms of money is to think about, first of all, what your goals are. So if, you're, if your key goal is to meet new filmmakers and network and connect, and let's say you live here in the US, then maybe stick to um, traveling 
domestically just in the US because obviously it's going to cost a lot of money to go to Australia or Fiji and even the UK. So it's going to be more in, you know, in travel and accommodation. So I'd say maybe think about where you want to network and what kinds of festivals you want to attend. So let's say it's domestically in the US, then I'd say set aside you know, don't go to every single festival. It goes about the goals again. So if you're really keen to connect with, you know, higher player industry figures and you've got into the Palm Springs Film Festival and definitely attend, get the flight there, look at good good accommodation, use your all kind of like vouchers and air miles. And then maybe say that would be a round trip, which probably be maybe between 500 and 850, depending on how much you want to spend on eating and drinking and where. Because obviously we have to take into that account is not just the cost of a flight and the cost of accommodation, like an Airbnb or couch surfing, but also the cost of living there. So do you have to use Uber? Can you walk? Can you get a scooter? Do you have to hire a car? Um, do you also think, you have to also think about the food and drink prices? Is it is it expensive in Palm Springs? Yes. Is it going to be expensive in, say, Oklahoma? Not as much. So it's kind of a case of doing research, looking at the average cost for a meal and drinking and living there for maybe a couple of days. That will give you a really, you know, really, really good ballpark. I, I will say having I had a movie years ago on the festival circuit and um, we set aside between 30 and 40 thousand dollars. You ended up not having to spend it. We went to 40 different film festivals, ended up not spending we spent probably less than half of that money because some festivals will, um, you know, will actually cover some travel costs, yeah. flight and hotel. Once you've got flight and hotel covered, I feel like it's important to learn to graze. Yes. So when you, when you go to like festival events, they generally have go for the protein. So if they yeah. have chicken <laughs> strips, eat those, eat healthy, if you can. And, and basically I think it's important when you're at festivals to, to um, this is going to sound weird advice, take vitamins and <laughs> eat at least one good meal a day. Yes. And drink a lot of water. That is a lot of water. That is spot on. In fact, you can maybe, even if you go to lots of like little um, networking events that have canapes, you can fill up on canapes, you know, have a couple of those and you're like, oh, I've had a meal now. Uh, but yes, that's true about some festivals can cover travel accommodation, not always for short filmmakers, but with features that definitely is a case. Um, it just, every festival is different. It's important to remember when you start your journey, when you're going to be traveling to them and working with festivals to get your uh, film um, exhibition copies sent, all the materials, etc. that every festival is different in terms of how they communicate with you, what information they give you, what money they can give you towards, you know, sundry expenses, all that kind of stuff. So it's important to be able to navigate around them and um, just be able to, you know, be flexible. <laughs> cool. I would also um, say even the big uh, festivals, they're not organized uh, on day one. Yeah. <laughs> just be prepared to uh, That's just investigate for yourself. Yeah. yeah I mean, they're, they're seasonal events. So you do have to kind of cut some slack. My advice is always just be nice to the volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If someone who's a volunteer at a festival this year is running the festival in yeah. five years or less. Exactly. Um, a comment here from Jen Exer on the farm. We went to Sundance in 2002 and 2003, enjoyed slam dance, no dance and trauma dance. Got to meet a ton of great people at these smaller festivals. Chris Gore sighting at all three. Oh. Thank you, Jen Exer. <laughs> Wow. On the farm. Say hi next time. Say yeah. hi next time. Well, that's 20 um, years ago, but yeah. <laughs> Brock Samsonite says, is there a known list of disqualifications for submissions? Well, that's a good question. So in terms of a list, in terms of what you'll get disqualified, it's not a case of, you know, if you don't upload to your Film Freeway project page a poster, you'll get disqualified. They might just send you an email going, please upload it at your latest convenience. But in terms of disqualification, it would be maybe one of the things you can get disqualified for is submitting to the wrong category or having a film that will not fit the festival because it's obviously not going to be what they're looking for. So, for example, sending to, say, a film festival celebrating deaf uh, films, check the T's and C's. Do you have to be a deaf filmmaker or not? If it's going to be all deaf filmmakers only and you're not deaf, they could disqualify for that reason. Also, incomplete submission can be sometimes having a rough cut of a film, which needs to be the finished cut, or having a film that is so incomplete they can't review it. That can get you disqualified. Um, and also sometimes... Another big thing for disqualification, which isn't maybe written, you know, in stone or on a website somewhere, is not being able to offer the film festival the premiere that they want. 
So for example, say that you submit to a festival and they can see that you, on your screening timeline, and your screenings and awards section that you've already had a screening in the UK and they have a UK premiere, then it's going to be disqualification because you can't offer them what they want. Right. Uh, more questions here. Uh, Christopher Moonlight Productions. What are the reasons that an indie filmmaker wants to be in a festival outside of distribution? Do accolades bring the audience? So, yes. So in terms of, um, first of all, what you have to, really have to do before you start doing any submissions is think about who is the audience for my film. And then say it's a say it's a genre film and it's a good horror film, then obviously horror festivals will be a very key target. Um, so being there, you'll be in the right uh, like appreciation group and get good feedback on the film, get good responses, know where the film stands. So the festival have an audience for your film. So there's two things are matched together. Um, also, the reason can be obviously getting, you know, good reception and having, you know, um, a good response and accolades and awards and nominations, all that kind of fun stuff. But also it's important for your social media to show that you were at this festival in official selection and you were there doing your Q&A. So getting lots of content for your socials and your website is really important that festivals can offer you with that platform. So always have a picture behind what we call the step and repeat. I'm sure you know what that is. But you know, when you mm -hmm. go to Slam Dance, it has in the background, Slam Dance, all the sponsors. That's important because it shows you were there with your film, get pictures of people taking pictures of you doing the Q&A, videos, all that good stuff will help a lot. Um, wow. So we'll show them what you're doing. Some people don't like doing it, but it's really important nowadays. Never used to be, as Chris has probably mentioned in previous um, previous shows, but like now it is. <laughs> Do you think uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's too many festivals? I mean, I see films sometimes with maybe 20 laurels in its poster. Is, is there too much or... Well, I, first of all, I think there are way too many scam film festivals. Um, and I don't like the film freeway it doesn't really vet them. Um, so for example, we, ha there's this thing that keeps going around in my, in, in my inbox called Dallas, uh, movie awards. And I know all the people, cause I live in Dallas and I know all the people in the industry here, you know, the, fe the festival, you know, the festival, um, uh, programmers and the key kind of directors. And then I thought, I don't know this person's name. So I asked everybody around. They were like, don't recognize this. So we thought, well, let's give them a call and say we want to sponsor the festival, you know, because it's local. So we called them. And obviously, this is the Dallas Movie Awards. There's no sign that it's live. It did say online. And all these awards, you know, you can win like 50 of them. It's ridiculous. So we, you know, emailed. And then we got this uh, email back. Said, oh, yes, call this number. And it was an Indian call center. So we were like, what? no, this is not good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is wow. not good. I was like, this needs to be taken down. But obviously, oh, wow, that's bad. That's yeah. Bad. So all of that. So sometimes I do, you know, see posters which have got all these, like, you know, the Indie Short Film Awards and the Indie Fest Awards. These all things are online. So they're not real festivals. So I don't see it as a genuine accolade because it's not a film festival. Um mm. So there are a lot of those, and I think there are a lot of festivals now, more well, than what they used to be when I first started doing this. Um, but of course, a lot of the key ones are the ones which are Oscar and BAFTA qualified, which is a small amount everyone submits to, because they're the ones that people, you know, might need to submit to to get far to go on the Oscar and BAFTA route. Um, but there are some also really good ones below that. But there are quite a lot more that are trying to get to that level, which aren't quite there yet, and will take a long time until they do, if they can sustain the pace. Because I think sometimes. A lot of festivals start up and they realize it's harder than what they think to run it. Well, I think one of the best award shows that not a lot of people know about is Award This. Man. Mm. If you go to awardthis.com, it's uh, we put that on. That's Film Threat does that every year. So we take the best movies that we've reviewed over the uh, previous year. They have to be reviewed on Film Threat. That's the only that that and you have to have distribution. Only two qualifications. And we do a live award show. We put it on YouTube. Uh, the filmmakers get drinks and, and you know, if bag. whatever. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> well, if bag. And, and then they get a physical award. So we actually, we do that. I mean, basically, it's just a way for us to draw attention to, you know, uh, to their work. And yeah. I do, I do think it's important. Like when you go, you're actually getting content, which helps you promote and market your movie, whether it's reviews, um, red carpets, or we even like for a movie that I did years ago, we filmed the Q and a at the festival and then put that on the Blu-ray. We put that on the DVD for the movie. Nice. So, that's, so it's like, we got some, some of that kind of stuff. Um, right. Immortal Remus's question for Dr. Smith. 
Sounds very, very. <laughs> I, I, I assume you are from England like me. I apologize if I'm wrong, but I ask, what is it like in this day and age for an indie English filmmaker to try and make it with their film? So, yes, I am from the UK originally. I reside now in the US. <clears throat> and in terms of what it's like for an indie English filmmaker to try and make it with the film, well, obviously, I presume that you are still based in the in the UK. And there is a very good community of filmmakers in the UK, especially in Soho, London, and a good networks and good community. So I suggest is to keep going to events which are run by filmmakers who are looking to connect with more filmmakers to build a good support network and can then help, you know, maybe connect with more people to get a project off the ground you can trust to produce and all that kind of stuff and help you. So the, I think the key thing to answer your question there is to build community and to build good relationships that you, people who you can trust. And I'll look at that good stuff in the UK. If you go on like Monday.com, shooting people, they're really good. And also there's a lot of really good festivals in the UK, which are BIFA qualify, which is the British Independent Film Awards. Those are really good. Like the Spirit of Independence Film Festival is for filmmakers, you know, indie filmmakers that make on low budgets. That's a really good festival. Norwich Film Festival is brilliant. And in London, you've got tons of others, you know, Edinburgh Film Festival, obviously Edinburgh Short Film Festival, there's loads. So you can definitely meet and connect with people there to find that good network, a good support network. And Flav, who's a member, just gifted 10 Film Threat memberships. Thank you so much for that. Check out our members tab on, fil on the Film Threat YouTube channel. Patrick Lemire asks, have you ever told a filmmaker to clean up their presentation? If that means, does that mean um, how they look in their, uh, in their dress? Or does it mean the Film Freeway page? <laughs> I'll say this. I'll say this, just having had a bunch of films on the festival circuit. I think it is important to have the best ambassador for your movie put yeah. forward that may not always be the director it might be a producer it might be one of the actors who is who is has a good public facing can represent the movie uh whether it's the media or whatever and then i always say this it's in my book the ultimate film festival survival guide have a unique look like yeah. like if you wear an orange hat wear it at every festival you're, yeah. You've got the orange hat, whatever it is, or you've got a certain look. You always dress in, in tuxedo tails. Yeah. I, okay, that's these are ridiculous, but you know <laughs> what I mean. It's like, like there's certain filmmakers that you know because of the way they look, right? Yeah, like, it's Tim distinctive. Burton, yeah, yeah it's Tim distinctive. Very distinctive. So I don't know if it's like clean up. I think it's a very uh, festivals. There's a lot of different types of people, but yeah. I think it's, it's important. Like who is really good at dealing with media? And exactly. then beyond message. Yeah, exactly. In terms of that, to answer that question, that respect is, yeah. So, I mean, I always, I always tell my filmmakers, you know, they can wear what they want, you know, if they want to wear, you know, top hat and tails or a suit and tie or Why like not? a leather jacket. They can wear what they want. The key thing to think about is them to have a very positive attitude. That's the key thing. And to be open to collaboration, open to new things occurring that you might not have thought about or, you know, assumed and be open that way you're, you won't miss things. So it's more a case of don't go in there expecting things like you said earlier, Chris, and instead go in with like low expectations, but also just a really clear neutral mindset and get excited that you're there and what might happen because there's so much stuff that could. And uh, it's okay to laugh asks a question. <laughs> Which are some of the best festivals for TV, web series, pilots, uh, POC? Okay. So definitely for episodic. So I've actually just started to work with a filmmaker who has an episodic right now, which is a pilot, which is very funny. Um, definitely without a doubt, Series Fest is like the holy grail for episodics and uh, web series. Then Catalyst Content, uh, definitely that one is exceptional. Also, a lot of festivals which are local to you, let's say if you're in LA, some of those general festivals do have um, – uh, categories for episodics or web series like Holly Shorts, for example, has both television and web series. And LA Shorts has episodics as well, which are both Oscar qualifying festivals and good for that kind of content, the accessible content. And um, in terms of POC, um, I would also suggest that, I mean, that there are some festivals that do have a category for that. There's not a huge amount, but some of them do. But the best one for proof of concept is, believe it or not, 
the Proof Film Festival. <laughs> it's wow. just started up, but it had its first year at the um, American Cinematheque. One of my clients won the best festival. And they give you a prize, which is equipment to make the film, so a camera. So obviously it gives you, you know, kind of gives you a lot of good stuff to get it started. Um, and it's all just proof of concepts. Obviously well-made, high-end proof of concepts. But they do ask that when you submit that you do send um, a statement of intent explaining how the short will become a feature. So what are the key themes, the world you set up, the character traits, all that kind of stuff is really important to show that you do have the vision and it's intact to then win a prize that could help you get it made, you know, so it's serious about that form. So those are my top, top ones for you for that. Yeah. Just to be clear, POC proof of concept. Yeah. Um, concept. We went to, I just Googled series fest and it came right up. Yep. That's a series very fest. good way. Right. Really good suggestion. That's awesome. One last question here, and we'll 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 wrap it up. Check your brain productions says, what if your film doesn't have a quote message? It's just a good old-fashioned escape for the audience. Is the film festival path the right one to take? So the short answer is yes. Not every festival film has to be a message movie. Um, if it's a good old fashioned, as you say, like, you know, fun and games, um, that's fine. There's going to be an audience for it somewhere. It might not be, say, the art house film festivals like Locarno and Colombia Vary, obviously, because those films are more of a different kind of audience. But that, that does exist. For example, there's a film I worked on, which was a very fun film, a really good comedy, you know, lots of laughs, a bit predictable, but it was so much fun, good dialogue performances and a really good length and it did well at local festivals what we call the local regional festivals that had that general kind of mainstream audience that were not looking for deep message hardcore you know art house movies looking for fun so yes is the short answer just just requires more research and more patience to look at those ones that do screen that kind of content but the short answer is yes and don't give up if you can have a lot of fun on the circuit with a film that's a lot of fun i i would i would add that um maybe you're lucky you don't that the festival circuit can be an option, but isn't necessary. I, I've had films on the festival circuit. The latest movie that I made, I just, I didn't take it to festivals. I think it's just too commercial for festivals. And I just thought, well, you know what? It, timing was important with it. And I released my, my film attack of the doc. Uh, you're a distributor. Great. There you go. Well, sounds, like someone's in, sounds like someone's in the kitchen. <laughs> this is my, my water just fell. <laughs> oh no. Well, Luckily, uh, it's uh, it's not it's not lead. Well, uh, Rebecca, I want to thank you for being on uh, the Film Threat Livecast right now. You are the Film Festival Doctor. How can people reach you? Um, you can reach me on my website, which is the Film Festival Doctor dot com, and also good old Instagram, which is at Rebecca Film Doctor R E B E K H F I L M D R. That's great. Uh, thank you again for being here. We appreciate it. And uh, just to everyone watching, we bring people on to give you advice if you're an aspiring filmmaker and hope we're going to continue to bring on more people. I also want to say our Sundance and Slamdance coverage will continue into next week. Rebecca, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It was so much fun. All right. Take care. Bye.